it's gonna be may what's up friends welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing well you know what this video is it's time for another monthly favorites these are gonna be all the products that i was loving in the month of april and i don't know about you guys but i feel like this month was an absolute slam dunk in terms of all of the spring and summer beauty releases i have a lot of stuff i'm excited to talk about today so if you want to hear all of my picks for this month then keep watching all right party people let's get into it hit me up with a thumbs up everything's gonna be linked down below i do use affiliate links I also have some b-roll for you guys so you can see how I got this look today because it is pretty much a full face of favorites. It's absolutely miserable outside and has been all weekend but I'm very much like manifesting the spring and summer weather that I hope to have with this makeup look today and if you're new here welcome to my channel. My name is Sophia. I'm a complete beauty addict and I upload videos every single week focusing on on luxury beauty and a little bit of luxury fashion as well. So if you like new makeup reviews, will I buy it? Favorites like this, definitely consider joining our fan by hitting that subscribe button. And without further ado, the first products I wanna talk about today that we have to talk about are some of the new bronzers that have come out. If you guys miss it, I did a full bronzer ranking video where I ranked all the new bronzers I've tried over the past couple of weeks and I did tons of comparisons so I can link that down below. The two that I've been reaching for the most have been number one, the Pat McGrath, and this is in the shade Naked Desire. It is the lightest shade. If you guys wanna see more demos, once again, definitely check out that bronzer ranking video. I thought that this shade was gonna be a little bit too light when I opened it up. I remember opening up the compact and thinking, ooh, <laughs> like I'm not so sure about this color, but it's actually super natural and very beautiful. I don't know what it is. I've just been really into the very light and natural bronzer over the past couple of weeks. And I don't think I had anything quite this light in my collection. If you really like the blush formula from Pat McGrath, I think you're really gonna like the bronzer formulation. You just need to make sure that you're picking up the right shade. A lot of her shades in the line run a little bit more on the warm side. They're not quite as neutral. And then the other formulation that has been a complete slam dunk are these new bronzers from NARS. These are the NARS Laguna Talc Free Bronzing Powders. I have the shades Laguna 01 and Laguna 00. Those are the two lightest shades. I would say Laguna 00 I've been wearing the most, but I wanted to demo for you guys today Laguna 01 because I didn't get a chance to show you that in my bronzer ranking video. As you can see, still extremely natural. I can wear both shades. It really just depends on if I want to look a little bit tanner or if I want to look a little, you know, maybe more natural because I don't really get all that tan. The formula of these is so silky and blendable. It's a little bit more powdery than the Pat McGrath ones. Also, if you're a talc-free consumer, you probably, you definitely want to go in this direction because these are talc-free and the Pat McGrath ones are not. But both of them, they're just as good. If you don't care about the talc or the ingredients, both lines, Pat McGrath and NARS, they are fantastic. I am so incredibly late to the game on the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. I almost am embarrassed at how long it took me to try these out. The tipping point for me was when they released the new shades in Virtue and Worth. Worth is actually the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks today. My goodness, these are so good. I've been loving them. I now have four shades. I have the two new ones, Virtue and Worth, which I did do a review on for you all. And then in the sale, I got the shades Love, which is a terracotta. And then I got this one, which is the shade Grateful. And I know that this one, the bright red one, it looks very, very scary. But let me tell you, friends, it's so incredibly beautiful. This is one of the dewier ones as well. So it spreads across the cheeks super nicely and it's a lot more natural than you think. In fact, this is the shade that I was wearing in that Tom Ford liquid lipstick review video that I did. It doesn't make you look like you've got bright red on your cheeks, but if you want to build it up, if you are tanner or deeper skin tone than me, you definitely can. I like the shades Virtue and Worth more for like every day when blush is a little bit more of an afterthought. But I like the shade Grateful if I'm going to do a bolder lip or I'm gonna wear like a matte lipstick, something where the flush and the lips are the focal point and then the eyes are super bare. Maybe I just do like a little bronzer or a little, you know, nude shimmer eyeshadow and mascara and kind of call it a day. So I wanted to call attention to this because I feel like not a lot of people have this color because they're afraid of it. In general, all the shades of this are good. If you haven't tried it out, you gotta give it a try. I was very late to the game. The Dior Summer 2023 collection. If you guys watched my review of that collection, you will know I really liked it. I didn't like it as much as last year, but I really did enjoy every single piece that I tried from that collection. And without a doubt, 
The item that I've been using the most has been the limited edition Luminizer. This is in the shade Coral Cruise. It's so pretty. I love this for spring and summer. What's cool about this is that instead of being just kind of like your basic champagne highlighter, this is a mixture of a very pale coral and a light gold, but it doesn't look super weird and holographic on the cheek. On my skin tone, because this is kind of pinky, it really does just melt into the skin. It's such a nice shade. It gives a little something extra. Obviously, all the luminizers from Dior are pretty. If you want something super neutral, I would recommend number 04 Golden Glow. That's kind of like the standard shade. But this is nice if you want something just a little bit different. It's a very beautiful highlighter and I do want to call attention to it because it's limited edition and I, I know it's going to sell out eventually. I'm a little bit mad though because there is another shade, a more golden shade. I think it might be called Golden Cruise. I can't remember what the name is. It's still not available on the website, nor are any of the lip maximizers. Does anybody have any information about when those are gonna be available? Because Rude Dior, you launched this collection and like half of the collection still hasn't launched. So I'm a little bit scratching my head on that one. When that one becomes available, I'm probably going to pick it up, but for now, I'm enjoying Coral Cruise. This next favorite of mine is a collection that I've received a lot of questions about, but unfortunately, I was not able to review it for you all, and I will explain. It is the Suku Pre-Spring Collection. I think it's pre-spring. This is the one that was inspired by sunflowers, and I actually got both of the eyeshadow palettes and both of the blushes, which I will show you in just a moment. Now, I ordered this, or I pre-ordered this from the Suku counter at Selfridges the day that it launched. Unfortunately, I will be honest, I did not have the best experience. They placed my order very late, and then after confirming my address three or four times, they sent it to the wrong address. Luckily, they were very kind. They did refund me for the order, and then I was able to just kind of go and place my order a little bit later after I got back to Boston. So I did get this collection very late, and I didn't get a chance to review it for you all. And so I wanted to give it a shout out here in my monthly favorites because all of the items are so, so good. In fact, I don't even think I'm gonna buy the summer collection. I'm just gonna enjoy this collection because it's so beautiful. And most of these items are still available, thankfully. So let me show you the ones that I picked up here. First, I have the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is in the shade 123. That is the ID for this particular palette. Oh my goodness, <laughs> what a pretty spring palette. This palette is pretty basic. We have some nice pink, you know, petal pink spring types of tones, but then we get this fun pop of sunflower yellow. Let me show you how I created this look today. First, I went in with that soft petal mid-tone pink and I applied that all over the eye. I also put that along the lower lash line. These shadows are so soft. They really look good on every type of skin. If you have mature skin, if you have dry eyelids like me, you are in luck because the texture of these is so nice and velvety. Then I went in with the fuchsia color and I just applied that to the outer half of the lid. These colors layer on top of each other so, so well. Next, I went in with the sunflower yellow, which I know it can be a little bit intimidating, but trust me, this is very soft and pairs really well with the other shades in the palette. I put this on the inner half of the eye, kind of creating a little bit of like a soft watercolor ombre type of effect. And then finally, I went in with the frosty petal pink and I applied that to the inner corner and the center of the lid. This is such a pretty wearable shade. You could kind of put this all over the eye, honestly, if you really wanted to brighten everything up. And this is the final look. So comment down below if you guys pick this palette up. I absolutely adore it. It's super wearable. I wore this look to my office the other day. Just a nice, easy, something to kind of slap on the eye, but looks very pretty. And then I wanna show you the other palette here, which unfortunately is sold out. I'm so sorry, guys. These collections sell out so fast. Suku is a brand that's very hard to review, honestly, because so many of the things fly off the shelves. But this one is number 124. You might be able to find it on some resale sites. I actually wore this one to a dinner party last night and I absolutely love this palette as well. I don't wanna to talk too much about it because it's sold out, but this one is so good as well. And I don't even wear greens all that much. This will be a good, you know, Celtics basketball game watch night type of palette for me to use. And then the blushes, the blushes are also very good. Now this one is called number 139 Kafu. This is 
a perfect nude. It is very similar, however, to a lot of the nudes in the Pure Color Blush line, but if you don't have a lot of Pure Color Blushes like me, this is one I would definitely look into because it is just the perfect nude blush. And then this one, which is a little bit more fun. Doesn't this look like a sunflower? So pretty. This one is also very wearable. The darker shade, that sort of rosy shade in each of these is kind of similar. And I know this looks a bit scary, but when you blend them together on the cheeks, it kind of just turns into a really pretty, kind of like bright rosy shade. Here, let's swatch it actually. See there on my finger? how it ends up looking more like a peach it's really really pretty it doesn't look yellow at all you just have to kind of blend it together and it's sort of like a luminous peach it's such a cool shade if you have a lot of other blushes from suku you don't have to get these because they are a little bit similar to ones that they've done in the past but if you were looking to pick one up i think that they did a nice job of making this entire collection and especially the blushes very, very wearable. Now my next favorite, which is also sold out, unfortunately I did check before filming this video, is the new Chanel LeBlanc palette. This is called Delice or Delice. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that okay. Oh my goodness. I love this. I think this palette and the Chanel Holiday palette that they released this past year are probably my two favorite Chanel palettes. The one from Holiday, it's warm, it's toasty, it's neutral. And then this one is like the perfect spring Chanel. I'm imagining myself in like a pink tweed jacket, something very fresh and feminine. That's like the vibes that this gives me. I already have a full review of this, so I don't have a look to show you guys today. Instead, I decided to do the Suku palette, but I did want to point out out, friends and if you didn't get to pick this one up look how similar the one from Suku is isn't that insane it's not exact but it's very very similar so if you missed out on this one and maybe you've been wanting to try Suku try picking up the Suku because it's almost the exact same colors the yellow in the Chanel it's more of like a frosty topper shade Whereas in here, this light pink is the frosty topper shade and the yellow, it's a little bit, you can kind of see it on my eyes there, has a little bit more of like a sunflower yellow punchiness to it. So I wanted to point that out. This, it's one of my favorites. I love it. I don't want to talk about it too much because it is sold out. I also love the blush as well. And you know what? I can't remember if I mentioned this in any of my videos, but my mom used this in the get ready with me video that we both filmed where we each did kind of like a spring look we were able to get her both the blush and the eyeshadow palette from the chanel leblanc collection and she wanted me to tell you all that she loves them and she's been using them and she used them and she got a bunch of compliments on her makeup look so now both me and my mom get to kind of enjoy this collection together and it does remind me of that video that we filmed together so that's also kind of why i love these tom ford tom for you sly dog launching all these palettes left and right. I can't even keep up, but I was able to review the three new wet dry formula quads that he launched for spring and summer. And correction friends, I'm pretty sure a bunch of you guys have been telling me that these are actually permanent. So correction there, I think I said in my review that they were limited edition. I thought that they were just around for spring and summer, but yay, apparently these are permanent and that makes me very happy because all three of them are so beautiful. My favorite one is Peach Dawn. I just love these sort of warm peachy tones for spring and summer. The Hazy Sensuality seems to be the one that is the most popular. That is the one with the brown and pink tones. That's the one that my mom used in the video that we filmed together and we actually got that for her as well, which was lucky because it's so hard to find. Be patient, friends. Apparently these are permanent but they're a little bit hard to find right now just because they are new. So subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram because that's where I let you guys know when these things come back in stock. And especially whenever I see Hazy Sensuality, I'm just trying to post it out. It's been a little bit annoying for those of us who are in the US because they're mostly, it seems, in stock in the UK and in Europe. They were at Neiman Marcus, but they just keep selling out. So be patient. I feel like maybe I should do a Tom Four quad ranking video because a lot of you guys ask me, you know, should I get the new one or should I get a classic one? So comment down below if that's something that you would be interested in. The palette that I said I was going to get, then I said I wasn't going to get, then I said maybe I should get, then I said nope, not going to get, and then 
you guys influenced me <laughs> I picked it up. This is the Vibrato Remembrance Palette. This is a really beautiful palette. I know I had a bunch of critiques in my review. You guys know I really like to dissect every little thing so that you have all of the information and you don't feel like you have FOMO. You know, everything has pros and cons. But in general, I've really been enjoying this palette. It's very beautiful. It's very neutral. It's very wearable. It is something that I can just sort of grab every day. I do have to go into an office now three days a week. And so having these very user-friendly palettes, like a lot of the ones that I'm talking about in this favorites video, are very much appreciated. You're getting a lot of pinks and browns in here. You all know, I already said it, I like warm tones, okay? We all know this. This is very much my vibe. And I also really like the shimmery sort of metallic topper shades that are in here. In my review, I did three looks. So if you guys already got this and you want a little bit more inspiration, definitely check out that review. The formula is really what keeps bringing me back. It's so soft, it's still pigmented, but it's very blendable and easy to work with. So if you haven't picked up this palette, if you're interested in this palette or just looking for maybe like a bigger palette with a lot of neutrals, definitely check this one out from Byredo. If you watched my Sephora sale haul video, you will know I picked up some new shades of some of my favorite lip products from YSL. I really like the YSL Candy Glaze Lippies, and I also really like the Rouge Volupte Shine. And the color that I want to call attention to, friends, is one of the new ones that they launched this year. This is called Rosewood Beat. How pretty is this color? This is what I'm wearing on my lips today. It's almost like a my lips but brighter type of color. It's called Rosewood Beat, but I would describe this more as, I don't know, maybe like a muted watermelon. It's not quite hot pink, but it's not quite coral. It's still neutral, but it just gives a really pretty liveliness to the lips that goes good with the Chanel palette, you know, the Byredo palette, the Suku palette that I'm wearing today. I also got the Showstopping Rose, which is the hot pink. That one is really nice too, but that one isn't as everyday for me than this one. It's more of like a Barbie pink. So I wanted to call attention to this one because I think it's the kind of thing that you can kind of just slap on with pretty much any kind of spring makeup look and it's gonna look so, so gorgeous. So this is the one probably that I've been wearing the most out of the couple that I picked up in the sale. Let's talk about some fragrance favorites. A lot of you guys know I am a huge fan of Tom Ford fragrances and I have two to talk about today that are really, really good for spring and summer. Highly recommend. I picked up both of these in the Sephora sale. If you watch my haul video, you will know I tried out the Soleil de Faux fragrance. That's the new one from Tom Ford. And I told you guys during that video, I felt like it was a little bit overpowering. It smells really good, but once I got it on my skin, I felt like it was just a little bit too overpowering. So I did go in store to try and see if maybe I could find another one that I like. And I actually found two and I picked both of these up. So let me talk about each of these and tell you what I like about them. This first one is called Neroli Portofino. First off, look at the gorgeous bottle. Doesn't it look like the Aegean Sea? It's so beautiful. And the notes of this, I'm just reading off Sephora, are Tunisian Neroli, Italian Bergamot, and Sicilian Lemon. This is going to be light and fresh for summer. You got those citrus notes that are at the top of the fragrance, and then everything is kind of grounded and balanced with that neroli. I like neroli. If you like neroli, I think you're going to like this. I like a good balance between the citrus and kind of that spiciness of the neroli. And the other reason that I picked this up is that it kind of feels like the fancy adult version of the fragrance that I used to wear as a child, which I actually have right here. I found a bottle of it in my linen closet, so I thought I would bring it out. That's right, I did wear a fragrance as a child. My grandmother used to braid me and my sister and my cousin's hair when we were little, when we would be, you know, I don't know, just getting ready for the day or kind of going out on an outing. And then she would take this fragrance, which is something that she used to pick up in Greece whenever we would go to Athens, and she would just kind of shake it all over our hair. We would freshen up with this fragrance. And it just smells, like straight up lemons. It's just like a very simple, fresh, lemony, citrus type of scent. And we used to have so many bottles of this around our house. So when I smelled the Tom Ford Neroli Portofino, I was like, I gotta get this because it really gave me that same 
like refreshed, ready for the day type of vibe. This isn't going to be as strong or as long lasting as let's say a Tom Ford Oud Wood, for example. It's a little bit lighter. It's not going to last quite as long, but it's the perfect thing that if I want something too heavy during the summer, I can just spritz it all over me, put on a little sundress and go out the door. I've really, really been enjoying it and I've been wearing it to work. Now, the other fragrance that I have here is Tom Ford Soleil Neige. And this is also really nice, like feminine, soft scent for summer. It's not as sultry and as strong as the Soleil de Faux. Honestly, why did anybody tell me about this fragrance? Because it is right up my alley. Let me read you some of the notes. Okay, so it says that the top notes are bergamot and carrot seeds. Pretty much a lot of my summer fragrance have bergamot in it. And then the base, also some things I really like are white flowers like jasmine. There's some Turkish rose in there. It says there is some orange blossom. And then the base notes are benzoin, which is kind of like a vanilla ambery type of scent. And then vanilla and labdanum. It smells really soft and summery, but still sophisticated. Like the Neroli Portofino is very much, oh, okay, this is like a summer citrus scent. This one's a little bit more complex. I like the fact that it has a balance between amber and vanilla, white floral, and then kind of like that citrus at the top. To me, it just is kind of like the perfect ingredients for a really good fragrance. And then finally, many of you know that I like to include a bag favorite at the end of my favorites videos. And definitely for this month, it has been my new Celine Classic Box Bag. This is in the small size with the Stingray and the box calf leather. If you guys miss it, I did a video where I went shopping at the Fashion File headquarters. So it's kind of like a vlog slash tips if you like buying pre-loved handbags or if you're interested in buying pre-loved handbags. And then I did an unboxing spoiler at the end of the video where I showed you this bag that I picked up on my shopping trip. It was a little bit of an additional birthday present to myself and I absolutely adore this bag. Now that I have the medium box bag and the small box bag, I'm gonna have to do a review for you all so I can show you kind of like a size comparison. You definitely can't fit as much in the small one. It is significantly smaller, but it's also so cute. I love this for my more petite frame. It's been a really nice functional bag that kind of goes with everything. And I also like the fact that it is a little bit understated. There's no logos on this bag. It's really just inside here on the clasp where it says Celine. It's one of those bags where if you know, you know, but to anybody, it just looks like a really classic, elegant bag. And the quality of this bag is so nice. Like I would almost say that this is better quality than like my Chanel bags. The construction of it is absolutely beautiful. I've just been really, really liking it. And I've been pairing it with pretty much all of my outfits, wearing it to work. Once again, there's no logos on it. So if you're kind of like, you wanna be a little more understated at work, but you want a functional bag, going with this or even the medium size because it holds more is a really nice option. So this has been my favorite bag for the month of April. Somehow I completely forgot to film the outro to this video. Sorry friends, but that's all the favorites that I have for you this month. I hope that you guys had a wonderful April and you will be having an even better May. I will have everything linked down below. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you have been loving this month. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.